Hi, I'm Donna Rodenizer. Welcome to Elementary Music with Donna. I'm sitting here in my backyard enjoying the birds, my beautiful rhododendron, and lots of cars going by. So we'll see if I can talk to you without being obliterated by traffic. Obviously, I'm not out at a campground, but I am going to talk about camp songs. During the regular school year, there are lots of curriculum outcomes that we as music teachers are trying to accomplish with our students. We have rhythmic and melodic elements to cover, we have listening lessons to do, movement activities, songs and repertoire the students need to learn for assemblies and concerts and teaching songs and game songs. Lots and lots of curriculum based activities that we do cover through our regular classroom activities. By the time you get within three weeks of the end of the school year, as a music teacher you have most of your assessing finished, you are working on report cards, your kids are looking out the window wishing they were not in school anymore, you aren't starting anything new, all of your focus in the music classroom is on review, so it is a great time to introduce a camp song unit. Camp songs can provide a lot of value to your students. They create a fun, sometimes silly, environment for your children to sing. Hesitant singers may all of a sudden be willing to dive in and join with the group and sing because they forget that they're actually singing. They're more focused on the silly story that they're telling or the words that are kind of disgusting and make us all go, ew, but they're fun to sing. And that is a great tool to give those singers. All of a sudden they are part of the group, they are not self-conscious and they are singing. What a wonderful thing for them to experience. If you have an administrator who says, why are these children singing, oh, Tom the Toad? What could possibly be your pedagogical value for singing this song? You can point them to the direction of all of the curriculum goals that you have accomplished during your year. You can let them know your assessments are being done. You are reviewing concepts. Your students who may have been hesitant to sing are now singing and participating. And you are giving the students music repertoire that they will be able to use in social settings with their family and friends over the summer break. These are all valid things as part of your music curriculum to create independent singers and to create music in social contexts and reflect cultural things that happen in your students' lives such as going to camp or going camping with family and friends. The camp songs that I teach to my students can be put into some different categories. You have songs with disgusting lyrics that make us say, ew. We have canons and rounds. We have action songs. We have sing-along songs. We have call and response or echo songs. These all have a very good function. They have different reasons why they are great for our children to learn these songs. And I have uh, created a collection of 20 songs that fit into these five categories that I've used over the years. Now I had a file that was about that thick and I have had to throw some of those songs out. They would be songs that I would have sung at camp when I was a young child. But over the years as we become more culturally sensitive and more aware of the other people who are around us in the world, some of those songs are now deemed inappropriate. So those songs have been put aside. There are other ones that work just great. We do not need to use songs that are offensive and deemed inappropriate. The songs that I have in my collection are ones that in my rural Nova Scotia setting have not been flagged for any reason. They are all deemed to be appropriate. I feel confident using them with my students that they will be able to learn them and they will wear well out in the world. If you are in a circumstance where you look at any of the songs in my collection and you say, oh dear, in my particular circumstance this is not going to be a good song to sing, leave it out. There's a saying, when in doubt, leave it out. You will know your demographic, the people you're dealing with, the situations within your school community. Be sensitive and careful and watch for that line. There, There is kind of some of the songs that you will say, mm, well, they wouldn't be something you would sing in a concert. They wouldn't be something that you would sing if 
the mayor of your town comes to visit and they ask your students to sing something for the mayor. But that is not their function and purpose. These songs are for out in social settings around a campfire and so they will not be as conservative, I guess for the lack of a better word, as some of the songs that you might choose for those settings. The echo and call and response songs are great storytelling formats. You do need somebody who needs to know all of the words in order to make that all hang together. Many storytelling songs that have been passed down orally over the years have changed in osmosis because whoever is singing it can't remember exactly how it goes so they make up something that fits and that's our oral tradition of folk songs as well. So you will have different variants. Some students may know the songs that you are singing and say, oh I know this but it goes like this and that's fine. That's how that goes. Cannons and rounds are wonderful. Two simple ones so that when you are out in a campfire setting and there's not really any specific leader that those cannons will sort of hang together and it is a wonderful experience to be able to start doing some harmony singing. They will hear those different layers as the cannons parts come in and what a great skill it is to have your children be able to sing in harmony as part of a cannon or a round. Sing-along songs are just those fun songs that are just so much fun to sing as you're all sitting around, oh do you know this one and, and everybody joins in. Action songs are great for loosening people up, they're singing silly words, they're doing actions that go with them, and they're getting all tangled up and what they're doing and they're having fun while they're singing as well. Songs with disgusting lyrics that make us say ew are wonderful tools to give to our students who may be hesitant singers. They'll dive right in there and sing those songs if they think they're getting away with something and singing words that may be not as appropriate as other songs that they may have learned in the past. I think I have a bumblebee here, my rhododendron. That reminds me of a song. I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. Ew. He, he stung me. I'm squishing up my baby bumblebee. I mean, it's all gory and gooey and ooey, and kids love to sing that. Throughout the year in the music class, we work very hard to get our children to sing. Sometimes there are social stigmas attached to singing, and someone somewhere along the line has said to boys, you sound like a girl when you sing. That just makes my blood boil. I spend so much time talking about the fact that all children's treble, unchanged voices will be in the same place. Their voices sound like my voice. Women's voices and unchanged treble voices are in the same place. And so when our boys are trying to sing and trying to sing low, that is a very detrimental thing to getting them to find their head voice and to sing as part of an ensemble and to find their natural unchanged treble voice. Camp songs can help that and all of a sudden they're singing these silly words and they, they forget all that and they just dive right in there and sing along. And that is a wonderful experience to be able to provide to those children. So they start to sing and start to join in in an ensemble and all of a sudden they're part of the group, they belong, they feel what that feels like. And I like to think that that may be a stepping stone to them being more confident and more willing to try a choir experience or an ensemble experience later at some point in time. I love knowing that I am giving the students songs that they will take out of the music room and sing in other settings. When they're sitting around the campfire with their family, with their friends, they are not going to sing the teaching songs that we've worked on in class. They're probably not going to sing that beautiful song that you sang at the assembly celebrating the opening of the new park in your school neighborhood. They will be singing the bear song. They'll be singing the moose song. They'll be singing I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. They will be singing Herman the Worm. They will have a great time with that library of music at their disposal. Another thing I like to do with the camp songs besides sending them out of the music room and into the world with my students over the summer is to have a camp day with the students in school. I've teamed up with a grade five teaching colleague at my school and we've had a camp day which was actually just the morning but the students did some activities that they might do if they had gone to a summer camp. Now some students have never been to summer camp, some will never go to summer camp and some have been and absolutely love it. So this is just a great experience for all of the students to experience a little bit of that 
camp atmosphere. So there are relay races, there are scavenger hunts, there are outside activities that are not your pencil and paper kind of everyday classroom activities, but a lot of fun. We do some camp song singing, and then we have a picnic lunch, which can be, we had pizza ordered in, but if you just want to have, you know, box lunches or whatever, that is a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do like hot dogs and marshmallows over a fire. The administrators wouldn't let us make a fire. Now go figure. But we did do s'mores, actually. We had a parent volunteer that set up a microwave and did sort of s'mores. They just melted the marshmallows between the graham crackers and the chocolate chips. So if your children are allowed to eat all of those forbidden things, then you can have s'mores and other goodies for your picnic lunch. We also had a grade six class that was invited to come with the grade five class and the grade fives actually took a leadership role and were able to teach some of the camp songs that they had learned to some of their grade six peers and that was a lot of fun to watch them take that leadership role and sort of run their campfire and sing songs. I want to tell you about one of the relay races that I think would just be so much fun on a hot day as part of your camp day. You get a line of students with a bucket of water at one end and an empty bucket at the other end you have a sponge, you put it in the water, and they have to pass the wet sponge down the line, and the last person gets to wring it out in the empty bucket, and you try to get a certain amount of water in the bucket in a time limit, or you can have two teams and try to see which team can get the most water within your time limit. Really, all they're doing is just getting cooled off and getting wet as they're passing this sponge along the line, but it is under the guise of being a relay and teamwork activity, which is a lot of fun. I hope that you find something useful in my collection of camp songs. If you find that some of these are not appropriate for your demographic, by all means leave them out, add other ones in. This is just a place for you to start, to give you a resource that you can put your hands on and, and create a file and begin the wonderful foray into camp song singing with your students. Have a great day making music and make music a great part of your day.